Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. Four, six. This is going to be a little different of a video uh, as far as film sessions go. I did an entire Leonard Williams film session video for the week of the Falcons game a couple of weeks ago. And I want to include a couple of clips from that video. So you might hear my commentary switch up a little bit talking about what happened this past week referring to the Falcons game. But my point still stands. I still have pretty much the same perspective of how Leonard Williams is playing. He's getting double teamed pretty much every time. No one fears Dexter Lawrence. Dexter Lawrence has taken a, a little bit of a step back. Uh, he's getting, I mean, singled. I never saw this guy get singled last year. He was unblockable last year, but Dexter Lawrence, people don't really fear him. Uh, so Leonard Williams, and, and people definitely don't fear 75 right here, Danny Shelton. Leonard Williams is getting double teamed a lot. Doesn't really have that edge presence. Didn't really have a dominant edge presence last year. But he's also having to play a lot on the outside. He's having to play a lot on the outside. So guess what? That means he's not going to be the same pass rusher rushing from a five tech instead of rushing from a three tech where you see him right now. There's a lot of things going on. He's having to play some nose tackle. He's having to play some one tech. He's having to play some two tech. He's playing basically all the way across the line, which that's what you should expect your $23 million man to do. You want him to play everywhere. But at the same time, where he made his money was from this position that he's in right now. So let's look at a couple of plays. Again, I'm going to kind of chop it up. My commentary may change a little bit, but I'm leaving these things in here and I'm including these older plays because my point still stays the same. So check out this first play. Leonard Williams is lined up at your three technique, and he's basically just causing mayhem. He's causing mayhem. He destroys this entire play. Let's just watch it. He's just going to come off the ball, get great extension, bench press this guy with one arm, get his right arm on another guy, push him into the ball carrier, and make the tackle that way. This is this, And then watch this. Watch how he finishes the play. Just throws him on the ground. Throws Tyron Smith on the ground. Now, again, I want to make sure that people know that I'm not necessarily attacking Patrick Graham and saying that he's doing the worst job in the world. Because putting Leonard Williams at this 4-3 defensive end at that 5-tech spot actually is working out. It's actually working out with him right here. It it works out for stopping the run. Because guys like Aziz, uh, guys like Lorenzo Carter, especially Ozane Zeman is, they're not that good at stopping the run. So when you have a down lineman here and a 4-3 that can stop the run, it helps you a lot. So you're just going to see Leonard Williams just basically get inside, and he's just unblockable almost in the run game. Like He, he shuts down the run game, and a lot of times they just don't run towards him. And I can understand why. So they run directly at Leonard Williams here, and he just basically just, as, as you can see, his arms are completely <laughs> unfair. If you ever, if you're an offensive lineman and you don't get your hands inside on Leonard Williams, as soon as the play starts, he's going to he's going to dominate. So you see, not only does he get his hands inside of the left tackle's chest, he also puts his hand on the back shoulder of that left guard, so that way he can't help. So pushes him out of the way, and almost gives himself momentum to get into the backfield and make a tackle on a running back. Beautiful run stop and play, and that's why they're playing him there. And I can understand that. There were a ton of times last year where Leonard Williams had three, four seconds sometimes to get to the quarterback. Now we have one of the worst secondaries in the league. I don't know how it happened, but for some reason it happened. For some reason it happened. And you're going to see the Giants run a stunt here. And Leonard Williams is right in, here in the middle of the formation. They're going to run a stunt here with him and Ojolari. It looks great. He attacks pretty much Zach Martin, attacks a double team, and he shares this block. And then by the time he gets there, the ball is already gone. And let's watch this in real time. I mean, you, you run a stunt. One, two, the ball's gone. And this happens pretty much every play. There's no, there's no secondary that's going to give him any time to get to the passer. And as an interior rusher, you can't just run the corner. And just get to the quarterback in, in less than two seconds. That's extremely hard. You can bull rush someone. That's pretty much the fastest route to the quarterback, bull rushing someone. But as far as being an interior pass rusher, 
you got to get some extra time or else the quarterback is just going to get rid of the ball in under three seconds the whole game. And then, I mean, at this point, to me, this is pretty much laughable. Leonard Williams is lined up all the way outside of the tackle, all the way to the right of your screen. He's a, he's a defensive tackle. I know when he came out of USC, people said that maybe you could line up as a 4-3 defensive end. It doesn't work. He's not a good 4-3 defensive end, at least when it, when you come to, to pass, pass rushing. He's not. So he's lined up all the way out here. What is this, a 6-7? What is this, a 7 tech? It's way too far out. So he's going to come off the ball, and not only, and this is what I mean, do they even want him to rush the passer the same way? Because not only is Leonard Williams, not only is he rushing off of the, the complete edge, he's also chipping the running back. He's, so when is this pass rushing technique going to come through? And that's a decent rush by Lorenzo Carter on the other side, but he pretty much gets stonewalled. But you're not even wanting pressure to happen. So let's see how long it takes before this ball gets out. One, two, someone's open. And that was a little bit over three seconds. So that was one of the, the longer plays. But... How is Leonard Williams supposed to be getting pressure if you're asking him to not only rush from the outside, which isn't his natural position, but also to be worrying about chipping the back coming out of the backfield? Now, you do have Lorenzo Carter right here, who's technically a linebacker, but this alignment is basically a 4-3 with an outside linebacker standing up. It's, it's kind of a hybrid front. But either way, Leonard Williams' base alignment is, is, is really outside of, of the left tackle, and I don't want that. I don't want this guy playing outside of the left tackle. It just doesn't make any sense. We, you don't need Leonard Williams playing a five-tech in a 4-3. That's not what we signed him to do. That's, that's just not what we signed the guy to do. And he plays it way too much. And the reason that he's playing it here is because they're concerned about our outside linebackers being able to stop the run. But to sacrifice all of our pass rush from, from a guy that's that elite as a pass rusher that he, that he was last year, we got to get him back in position so he can thrive. Chris Jones, he can play a little bit of five tech. Leonard Williams, he can play a little bit of five tech, but you don't see him playing it. I mean, you don't you just you don't want him playing that entire game. Move Leonard Williams to the weakest offensive lineman on the other on the other team. You, you just move him to the weakest offensive lineman and let him work at that point. And that's what he can do. He's that versatile. But to line him up at five tech against Matthews, who I think is a really good left tackle. I, I, don't, I, don't, I won't say he's elite, but I think he's really good. It's, there's no reason to waste a guy out of position on an offensive lineman that's not even a bad lineman. So this particular play, after my whole, after my whole mini rant, this particular play, Leonard Williams actually gets a sack. But the way that he gets it, you're going to see him. It, it's, it's very unorthodox. It's a play action. He attacks it as if it's a run play which he's very good at from that spot as a run defender. And they just leave everything open. And at that point, all he has to do is just get skinny, which Leonard Williams does at a very elite level, spin off, and then just go get the quarterback, which at this point is almost a cover sack. But he does a really good job of fighting to get the quarterback and making a nice play and getting his first sack of the season, I'm pretty sure. And this play, this doesn't you're not even going to see Leonard Williams on the field. I just had to throw this in here because – Danny Shelton, or my new nickname of Danny Shelton is Danny Phantom, the biggest ghost on the planet, on the planet. I mean, he's got to be the biggest ghost on the planet. Danny Shelton is the reason that this run game is happening like this. He's not the only reason, but I say he's a big reason because Danny Shelton or Danny Phantom, every time you see the guy, he's getting pushed off the ball. Now, this play, he gets double teamed. At the beginning of it, he gets double teamed. And I don't want to hear about 360-pound men not being able to beat double teams. But here he just gets doubled at the start of the play, and then Connor Williams breaks off, and he just starts to go. So now you're one-on-one -on -one with Tyron Smith. Now, Tyron Smith is a strong guy. He's a fast guy. He's an all-pro offensive lineman. We know. But you're one-on-one -on -one with a human being who is, who is much smaller than you, being honest. He's got about 30. He's got about, what, 40 pounds on him disengage or don't let him push you upfield instead Danny Shelton is getting completely washed and we have another run up the middle 
This is the biggest reason. I don't want to see people blame Leonard Williams for the run. And this is why I put this in here, because I could find a bunch of plays of Danny Fount Phantom get him just destroyed off of the line of scrimmage. We brought him here because we thought the one thing he could do was be big and not allow these sorts of things to happen. All right, so I did a little bit of mashup between this video and the Falcons the video that I did on Leonard Williams that I never got to put out. So a good mix up, you probably hear, heard a couple of things. Hopefully I didn't contradict myself too bad. But anyway, uh, Leonard Williams to me, he's the same guy. He's been the same guy his whole career. He had an abnormal year for sacks last year. I don't expect that dude to ever be a 10 plus sack guy every year. I think he's a six to seven sack guy, which is very good for an interior pass rusher. If you look at Chris Jones, you look at the other interior guys. If you look at Aaron Donald, he has three sacks. None of these guys have a bunch of sacks. That's just not, that's just not what happens from that position. It rarely happens from that position. So, Leonard Williams is, is pretty much on par with the other guys that are getting paid, how much he's getting paid at his position. He's dominant against the run. They have to run away from him. He just needs help. He needs help from Dexter Lawrence. He needs help from his edge players. Someone else has to get pressure because that's going to open up things for him. And also, they all, all of this, the entire defensive line needs help from the secondary. If the secondary continuously leaves guys open to where the quarterback right at the bottom of a three-step drop already has someone wide open, the pass rush will never come through. It's just It just will never work. So that's my take on Leonard Williams. I tried to put together two different weeks. You guys let me know what you're thinking of Leonard Williams. I know some people this wasn't enough to convince them, but let's put things in perspective. I think he's he's doing all he can. He's not an edge rusher, guys. He's not going to have that kind of impact without help from other defensive linemen and without help from the secondary. If you made it this deep into the video, come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily, and during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, Go ahead and join the D6 squad.